you say? It's gonna be hot tonight, folks. If you can't take the heat, you better get out of the kitchen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again in the studio with me tonight. Champagne on mic number two. And behind the console, we have Lionel Ellis. Good evening, everyone. Welcome wherever you listening to the wonderful sounds of Kyrie FM 93.1. We're also on the internet. And if you're listening south of St. Lucia, welcome. If you're listening, one of our Fans in the USA, in New York, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Florida, in Canada, and in the UK. Uh, I saw some of uh, my new fans here for the carnival, so that was uh, really nice. We had some things to talk about. Tonight, where do I start? There's been so many things happening over the past few days, few weeks, so many statements made, and everybody's itching to hear what's going to be said on the show tonight. Good evening to those of you in Grosley. I know we have uh, quite a number of fans up there. Just in case you'd like to call in with your questions and comments, number to call is 452-093-456. That's right, 456-0931. 456 0931 And if you'd like to email us your comments and questions and anything else that's on your mind, in the email address is info at keepingitreal.lc. Info at keepingitreal.lc. Folks, tonight, um, you know, we are exposed to a lot of the culture in the region. And our just concluded carnival season, which had a very big part of it being the Calypsos, a number of us have attributed the freedoms of singing Calypso music and um, happenings in our communities, in the island, as being reflected and being forever recorded in song, in music. And um, I like to keep it real a little bit because when I was going over a number of the issues which I will be discussing with you tonight, one of the songs that came to mind was not actually from or is not actually St. Lucian, St. Lucian in origin at all. In fact, it's from an island north of St. Lucia. And um, I'd just like to intro that a bit for you because that's going to be the focus of a lot of the discussion tonight when we look at the ways that some of our elected officials have was a little intro there that's uh, those of you who know Jimmy Cliff hypocrites and I think it's quite appropriate for today's tonight's show because we've been bombarded with propaganda and half-truths and lies 
for quite a while now from a bunch of hypocrites. And you know, folks, we have a number of issues which have remained with us for a number of years. And as a result of these issues, this current administration under Prime Minister Alan Chastney has to deal with cleaning up a great deal of the mess which was left by the previous administration. Now, this is not made up. It's not imaginary. We're not on any hallucinogenic drugs. The facts are there. The record is there. The evidence is there. And tonight, I would like to call out two hypocrites. Not because it's a fancy thing to say or it's a disparaging thing to say, but it's based on the statements that they've made, the representatives of Viewfort North and South. And we're going to deal with those issues tonight and a number of others with hypocrites. And tonight, Dr. Kenny Anthony continues to remain a hypocrite because he calls for the accountability of this administration on every opportunity that he is given. Every opportunity that he gets, he wants answers. And by extension or direct connection, his right-hand man during the previous term in office, Philip J. Pierre, the rubber stamp to all of Kenny Anthony's policies and agendas in government, went unchallenged by Philip J. Pierre, went unchallenged by Moses Jean-Baptiste from Viewfort North. And when questioned whether in the House or elsewhere about Grindberg, Dr. Kenny Anthony has remained mum, a politician, a man in St. Lucia, who we have all grown to know as being very vocal about the issues. But for some mysterious reason, questions about Grindberg and the state of our seabed and how we got into this debacle, if you want, have remained unanswered, unsatisfactorily responded to by anyone. The most most of us know about the issue is that one Earl Huntley, while walking on Casaba Beach, stumbled upon some gooey mess on his foot and decided then that this must be an indication of oil in or around St. Lucia. And so the story began of Jack Grindberg. I'm not necessarily going to get into the details of what just about everybody knows about Jack Grindberg so far. You can do a search on the internet because the majority of those listening tonight are very adept with Google. Or if you prefer Yahoo, if you prefer Bing, Alta Vista, any of the other search engines, you can Google Jack Grindberg and find out lots of information about that individual. Nevertheless, some of that information is that he was involved in a rather tumultuous escapade with the government and people of Grenada in a similar situation. And, of course, the record of the Internet will speak volumes about what went on down there and what had to have been done for the Grenadians to extricate themselves from the horrendous situation of Jack Grindberg. But folks, when you challenge someone to be honest, when you challenge someone to speak the truth, you yourself must be credible. 
But what makes it even worse with this former administration is that the very challenges they make of this government led by Alan Chastney, St. Jude's Hospital, Healthcare in St. Lucia, the OKEU, National Health Insurance, and a number of other seriously important issues in St. Lucia life. The incredible thing about it all is that they themselves, while being in office just a few years ago, failed and failed to deliver on the very things that they demand that this government fixes. Fix St. Jude's. That's the mantra nowadays. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's the go-to challenge to the government. Fix St. Jude's. Well, why didn't you fix it? Yourselves. Shameless. Why didn't you fix it? What exactly was the problem? 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, and midway into 2016. And St. Jude Hospital is nowhere far gone past 50% being complete. But fix St. Jude's. Multiple occasions. The former Minister of Health, Alvina Reynolds. The hospital will be open soon. In the next few months. In November. Right the end of this year. In fact, in 2015, whilst walking into the House of Parliament in Castries, she was challenged by a reporter as she ascended the stairs. Well, when will it be done? And her response was, soon. One year later, soon had not yet come. Just like immediately on getting into office, we would inject $100 million into the economy. Well, that immediately has not yet come. Well, folks, failures of the SLP when in government are the past. All failures. Oh, that's the past, man. That's the past. Forget about that. That's the past. You're in, in office now. However, when crime takes an uptick, oh, no, that's not their problem anymore. Oh, no, they don't want to take responsibility for that. That's the current administrations. So anything that this government is able to accomplish is because of the good foundation left by the SLP. But anything that doesn't work out, crime, anything of the sort, oh no. It's the problem of this government. A dilapidated, neglected, and crumbling George Odlum Stadium built under their watch is hardly mentioned. And no big deal. Even though a report commissioned when they were in office in 2005 describes it as a disaster waiting to happen. But lo and behold, hold on, just hold on a second here. Champagne, you listening to me? I am 100%. 100%, my brother. Right. Strange, you know, we've been hearing so much about leaks, mm -hmm. you know, documents which are not secret, you know. Leaks. All form and manner of leaks are out there. But important documents which would give this current administration, this UWP administration under Alan Chastney, documents which would give this government an indication of how sordid the maintenance of facilities and the affairs of government were before are nowhere to be found. Yet we have leaks going out of nothing going wrong, you know. Just the interpretation of certain internet gurus. But you know, life is strange, folks. It's very strange. 
And while you have these supposed leaks of government documents going out into the public, the government is getting leaks coming in. Can you believe that? And over here, folks, I have, let me find it because I have so many documents here. I want to pull up the right one for you tonight. Let me just make sure I have the right thing here for you. Yes. Leaked, a reverse leak. That's what I'll call it. A reverse leak. December 2015 prepared by let me let me get my spanish tongue ready there to read this prepared by jose a rodriguez gles civil engineer and amos hippolyte civil engineer and it is titled george odlam stadium structural report now before i go any further with this because there are some excerpts in here that I'm going to read to you. That's right. A reverse leak. Couldn't be found anywhere in the government offices or the ministry where it was supposed to reside. Remember, folks, about the concern that some individuals have had about the George Odlam Stadium recently. About the hurricane season is fast approaching. Remember the comments about people dying at St. Jude's, at George Odlam Stadium. Remember the statements about the leaking or overflowing sewers. Remember all of that. Remember the fiberglass roof. I'll go to section 5 of this report on page 14 for those out there who have a secret copy that they did not leave in the government offices to be found. Section 5 says, Recommendations and Conclusions. We don't need to go through all the other peripheral information. Let's get to the conclusions, to the, the nitty-gritty of it all. And it says here, the structural condition assessment concludes that there is uncertainty in determining the structural integrity of roof structure when exposed to an extreme event such as an earthquake or hurricane. However, the roof structure is in an extremely dilapidated state and may be approaching a premature end to its design life. The levels of deterioration observed in the structure is not consistent with the age of the structure. Therefore, it can be concluded that some form of urgent intervention is required to improve the structural capacity of the structure. The major findings are as follows. Now, remember, between the date and time of this report to the UWP getting into office, one and a half years, nothing was done at the George Odlam Stadium. And if you will recall, in a video with then Health Minister Alvina Reynolds, she said that it was not the responsibility of the Ministry of Health. Well, apparently it wasn't the responsibility of any other ministry in government because nothing was done at St. Ju at, at St. Jude's George Odlam Stadium Hospital. So, let's, let's move on. It says, uh, the major findings are as follows. And we move on to page 15 to those of you who have your secret copy out there. The load resisting system of the structure is severely compromised by extensive corrosion of the structural members. Next observation. 
catastrophic collapse of the roof structure is possible under extreme loading or through the continuous deterioration of the structural members by corrosion. Does a hurricane sound like a situation which would pose or exert extreme loading on the structure? There has been lack of maintenance of the roof structure. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. The material type was poorly selected to adequately resist the aggressive environment. Well, it was built under the SLP in 2002. So, um, maybe somebody needs to give us a little report as to why inferior materials were used in the roofing structure at the George Odlum Stadium. The corrosion protective system was inadequate or poorly applied. The constant shedding of degraded materials from the roof structure represents a hazard to human life. Wow! 2015. Yet some people would have you believe that these problems with missiles for want of any other word only began recently. Oh, people are going to die. Yeah. You bloody hypocrites. You have a transform so-called minister of agriculture. Hypocrites. Now, now being a, a, a minister of health. Yeah. Opposition minister of health. If there's such a thing. Yeah. The hypocrites. Yes, folks, that is the quintessential definition of a hypocrite. Oh, uh, now, Brother Norbert, what was done with this report? Uh, what was done with this report? Because well, well, it disappeared. <laughs> it wasn't found. But everything you just read is what the guys are accusing today. This current as government. As a matter of fact, I heard it on the As a result today. of this government's yeah. neglect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These very same problems yeah. are yeah. only surfacing today when we have their own report yeah. from 2015, which already indicates mm -hmm. a situation which had already existed to fall into this report. So the gentleman was basically reading a pitch from their own stuff. Because uh, maybe they, the that's today. what exactly what they were doing. <laughs> I heard him on the news today saying about the, the very the exact same things you read was exactly what you were saying today. <laughs> and I like the title, the song, hypocrites. That's right, that's right. But you know, we we have to look at Viewfort. And when Alan Chastney and the UWP administration attempts to revitalize to invigorate the south view fort an area of saint lucia that had been left for all intents and purposes barren destitute fatherless abandoned the stories of the new frontier way back when by you know who the new frontier as if it was Star Trek or something in outer space. Nothing happened out of that. I don't know whether the Klingons landed in Viewfort and scared everybody away. But the new frontier was never developed. After 20 years of neglect. After 20 years of closed businesses. After 20 years of abject poverty. They cry foul and complain about this current administration of selling our patrimony. Ooh, patrimony. Doesn't it throw shivers down your spine? My gosh, 
They're going to sell our patrimony. Damn it. The disregard for the environment. You know, it is incredible. Just recently, I had the opportunity of going way up above the Beau area there on that hill and looking down. And I had heard before there was a, a garbage dump there. Whatever the official name is, not really important. It was a dump. Yeah. And I saw that, that thing there. It's huge. It's gigantic. It's a mountain mm -hmm. of garbage. Birds looking for scraps. Dogs, a lot of the wild stray dogs from Viewfort are roaming around that place there. And I said to myself, but how could that garbage dump have been placed there in the first place or allowed to be put there? And we have all these concerned citizens in Viewfort and these concerned former members of government. All who crying about our patrimony and the environment. And they had not been concerned about the drainage from that garbage dump of millions of gallons of poisonous, toxic runoff into the, the, the mangrove. Aren't you really the epitome, the poster children of hypocrites? I mean, seriously? Don't you all have a conscience? Don't you have a conscience? Not a word was uttered by these suddenly conscious and environmentally aware citizens. Concerns about the repairs at the George Odlum Stadium surfaced all of a sudden, as I said before. But the talk about DCA approval is rather ironic. You know, when people argue, when you want to put yourself on this pillar of virtue, this pillar of righteousness, this pillar of concern, this pillar of appreciating and being concerned about our patrimony, 60-odd million dollars for an office complex in view for months before elections. Was it an, uh, an election gimmick? You decide. You decide. Was it an election gimmick, folks? But then lo and behold, the same people who cry now about DCA approval for demolition works or cleanup of the roof at the George Odlum Stadium are the same ones who were involved or who were in the background when there was no DCA approval, yet an office complex building was commenced in Viewfort. There was no ownership of the lands to commence the, that construction. What about doing things the right way back then? Oh, no, no, no. Champagne, mm -hmm. you need to stop that. That's the past, man. That's the mm -hmm. past. Yeah. Don't concern yourself with that. Mm -hmm. That's the past. When the so-called jazz festival was becoming a bigger financial burden on St. Lucia, year in and year out, with an astronomical $14 million price tag and minimal benefit to our local artists, and minimal returns to St. Lucia. They claim it was the greatest thing since sliced bread because you had hundreds and you had thousands of freebies. Mm -hmm. Large crowds. Yep. Oh, yes, the crowds. 25th anniversary of 
jazz. Blow up the bank, man. Pump it in. Yeah, let's go. It's just like people who spend tons of money for carnival costumes and then September rolls around and they can't afford school books and shoes and uniforms for their children to go to, to, to school. I, 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 I see somebody there going through some of my documents and I, rolling I, his eyes. I, good evening, St. Lucia again. I am amazed to see some of the things I'm reading in this document. Um, Robert, and, and I think that maybe some of it is worth mentioning. Um, first of all, um, first thing I saw when I looked at this document is the assessment was conducted at the request of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, Human Services, and Gender Relations by email dated November 20th, 2015. Oh, really? 2015. And Looking at, there's a part that interests me. It says here, the structure is located in close proximity to the sea mm -hmm. where the environment is ideal for the corrosion of steel. In, in such an environment, periodic maintenance of the steel members is critical to ensure that the structure lasts its intended design life of 60 which years. Which is 60, 60 years. years. 60 um, years. So 2002 to 2015 then yeah. Yeah. was how many years? <laughs> 13 years. So but, but it was supposed to last, last 60. 60 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I, mean, I mean, this is the first time I've seen this. Yeah. I mean, however, listen to But this. how could you see it? You, you were not in, no, in the loop. It. However, given the age of the structure, the level of deterioration observed in the roof is alarming, which suggests that the selected materials, inferior quality galvanized steel was not suitable for the aggressive environment of St. Right. Lucia. That's right. The salt. That's right. And with such close proximity to the sea. I mean, did you make this a, 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 a public <laughs> a document, document of, of the, the house? Of the studio? <laughs> 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 but, hey, wait a minute. Can I say this something? Is uh, but of because course. Because it is said that the location of the George Odlum Stadium currently yes. is where it is now. Yes. Was not the, 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 the intended, uh, intended location, location. Mm -hmm. but then a brilliant former prime minister brought it down there. I also want to say, in 2009, after United Workers Party got in in 2006, renovations was done to the George Odlum Stadium mm -hmm. in the range of about nine million dollars. You guys remember that the character games was held there. That's right. But listen, That's right. Right. It goes on. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. We in 2009, nine, yeah. just seven years, seven years after, after it was, it was built. built. Yeah. It, is, it is also benefit. possible. It is also possible that the corrosion protective system used was grossly inadequate or poorly applied. The breakdown of the protective coating system on the structure has led to severe deterioration of the metal, which is prevalent at the interface of the framing members and nodes, which are the connections. These structural components manifest advanced signs of corrosion, such as pitting and exfoliation. Um, this, this, this report is very interesting. Yeah, I think very everything And if, if, if the, the, the Minister of Health at the time, at the time saw this report, um, what did she say to the public of St. Lucia? Uh, what did she say to the people of St. Lucia? Yeah. What with did she regards? say? What well, it was commissioned say? by, you yes, read it yes, there, yes, Ministry of Health, right? Yes. So if this is... But, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Was this made public? Did well, you ever hear about this or no, see I it anywhere? No, I never heard about this. But I why, mean, why, I mean, for a previous administration, which demands... Yeah so much accountability and transparency of this government. And in fact, the most accountable and transparent government in the history of St. Lucian politics is this Alan Chastney-led administration. Yet, these pillars of virtue, these pillars of honesty and transparency, who call for transparency of this administration, they themselves failed to be transparent then. And this is the evidence of that. 
And, and the report has pictures of the, the joints, the frame structure, the connecting uh, members, and how corrosive, um, how critical, this is a critical state but, of corrosion. But you don't need to refer to this. That, all of that is the past. That That's is, what it's It's what, what it's you past. in there now, you're the ones who have to deal with that situation. You've got to make this a document of the, uh, of the studio. Of the studio. No? The studio. The I'd like to present this, this report here. Mr. Ellis, yeah. as a document of the student, I'd like you to make copies and pass it around to all persons in here at this time. Not just here. I don't know why. <laughs> every solution, no, seriously, every solution needs to have a copy of this because this was a hidden document. Okay. Hidden yeah. document. It, it, well, well, f uh, I don't know where it was. But, uh, no, but we, we're not maybe, there's, take... maybe there's a secret, there's a ministry of secrets. And we must Some apologize, way. but at least we must apologize. We don't want to take over um, Brother Norbert's no, this I, program, but this is important. No, I just glanced at it yeah. and I saw this thing and I can read and I, I'm the, saying it has the coat of arms on it. Yeah, yeah. It, it has the Government of coat the of arms, uh, Ministry of Infrastructure, yeah. Port Who is Minister of Infrastructure, at Port Transport and... Um, I don't know. Services and transport. Maybe time. somebody will call and asking. let us know. I'm just I don't asking. recall. I'm just yeah. asking. I think it was Mr. Pedro. I'm just ask, I'm asking. I, I don't Who's know. The minister, I don't know. Ministry of Infrastructure uh, in December 2015. I, I don't know. Who was it? Who, who was it? So well, maybe we need a private detective. No, I know who it was, but let the, the callers will call and, let, and tell us who they were. That person was. <laughs> okay, folks. We're um, going to take a break. And we're sorry to take over your show, brother. And who
welcome back with us folks you're listening to Kyrie FM 93.1 email us with your questions comments info at keeping it real dot LC if you'd like to call number is four five six zero nine three one okay well I, I am really stunned by what I'm seeing there. If this is the, the case that uh, existed in 2000, I, you know, I didn't, I've never taken a close look of, at the, the members supporting that stadium and the roofing and so on to get a first-hand look. I've looked at the stadium by passing the highway. But with this report showing you detail, um, structural corrosion, the roof and so on, and if this report, as you say, um, as is written here, was created in 2015, then it, it says that the, the, the former regime did not explain to the people of St. Lucia the critical nature of the stadium. Um, and, and well, well not, just, not just the critical nature of the George Odlam Stadium, the critical nature of the George Audlam Stadium while it housed That's right. the St. Jude Hospital. Because it showed clearly that the, the, there could be a collapse of the, of the roofing. During that time. During that time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, that's, maybe that's why the former prime minister is now worried about something going wrong drastically going wrong. And and, because and he, yet... I can't see him not knowing that there are reports like oh, this Oh, he existed. knew, he knew, man, he knew. And, and nothing was done back then. That's the big deal. Nothing was done back then. But you, you How think, can some people sleep at night? How? You think the member for Beaufort North knows about this report because what maybe, I maybe maybe the ministry of health was holding it back I, from him apparently because what i've heard this guy what have, he's been saying in regards to the fixing of the, the, the demolition of the roof thing at the george Orlem stadium is <laughs> tonight see, tonight on the news i heard the man talking about the, the asbestos roof and, and all kinds of people uh, have, have been dying and all that kind I, of stuff I, I, and I that might, report was then i might come to the conclusion that if the members of the cabinet didn't know about Grindberg and yeah. didn't know about other things. Maybe they didn't know about this report. Oh, boy. Maybe. Oh, boy. Maybe. Maybe there's Maybe a lot of see. secrets going on in there. Well, folks. Because, I mean, it's clear that maybe the present leader of the opposition didn't know this. Maybe we need to get some more reverse leaks. Maybe there are a lot of other reports that we have no inkling about that somebody has in their possession out there or some bodies. Hey. You, know, you know the word you use, uh, Brother Ellis, maybe. You know, I'll accept that. But I'm not getting, taking any excuses for these guys. No, you see, because I'm not a guy there. You know. no, I, I know, don't know I for know sure. Not. I know I'll not. say maybe. I'm not making any excuses for these people. Never. Never. Hmm. Okay, Never folks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, there always is this drama thing that keeps popping up. And I'm just getting some more papers here. Because, you know, the worst thing in this world, in my opinion, is to be insulted, to have your intelligence insulted. And we have some people out there peddling documents that many of the people who find them on their computer screens, or on their telephone screens, don't really understand the veracity or the full meaning behind what they're looking at. And they're influenced by the fake information that is peddled by the persons pushing those documents to create an uproar, to create some sort of instability in the country, to affect the confidence which the people have in this current government. And one of such documents was actually a memo from the Ministry of Home Affairs 
to the Immigration Department with regard to government policy. As far as Chinese nationals are concerned and as far as Venezuelans are concerned. And again, the SLP, as it always does, is play with the meanings of words. And the simple four-letter word as stay, that Chinese nationals will stay in St. Lucia without a visa. They can stay or in transit through St. Lucia. And folks, when I read that, I, the meaning of it was not lost on me. Not because I had been in the loop with the previous discussions about visa requirements for Chinese or the removal of requirements or anything concerning the Venezuelans. <clears throat> but many years ago in Bethlehem, I was an immigration officer. So the language and the wording used in that memo was not above my head. It was not foreign to me because working in immigration, you have a specific vocabulary and you know what words mean and you know what expressions of, or, or, or mean in memos. It's just like you have specific vocabularies for mechanics in the mechanic field. Or if you're a pilot, there's specific vocabulary relating to aviation. If you're a jockey or if you're into horses, there's specific vocabulary that somebody who deals with boats may not necessarily know a number of the words that are used to relate to horses or mechanics or a car engine or something. And what happened online, <clears throat> because this was put out there into the wild, and all the experts, the Facebook experts and the social media experts descended upon it in a feeding frenzy. It was incredible to observe that persons who never spent a day in immigration or worked a day in government, much less did anything else themselves, all of a sudden became experts at what a memo meant. Oh, we're going to be opening up our doors to two billion Chinese, oh my gosh. We're going to be overrun by Chinese. Really? And then today we heard in the house the illogical argument that we don't have reciprocal agreements with people and yet still we're opening up our shores to two billion Chinese. You know how far away China is from here? <laughs> my friend, if you are going to travel from China to St. Lucia, you ain't going to be broke. <laughs> okay? Try, try flying to Australia and see how much, or China, and see how much it costs you. Mm -hmm. Right? Number one, you, I mean, please, folks out there, when you hear these, you know, nerve pinching, these, these juke stories out there, stop for a moment and think, does this make sense? I mean, would you leave St. Lucia and go to China? Why wouldn't you? If you say no, he's an Eiffel, ah. Well, why wouldn't you? Guess why? Because you don't speak Chinese. The hell are you going to function over there? So, when the Chinese come over here now, what are they going to do? Speak Chinese patois to you? What, what are they going to speak to you? Now, preying on the ignorance of people, and ignorance is not necessarily a bad thing, you know. If you're ignorant, it means you don't know. It can be used in a number of different contexts as well. But the argument that we're going to be opening up St. Lucia or St. Lucia will be opened up to 2 billion Chinese because visa requirements are waived is just 
fear and propaganda peddling because St. Lucia is friends with Canada, with the U.S. You need a visa to go to the U.S. right now. You need a visa to go to Canada. Canada. But does that mean they need a visa to come to St. Lucia? And you know, this, this fallacy that so many people have, this, this prejudice, China is just about the largest economy in the world. China, in the past 20 years, has recorded a phenomenal growth in billionaires and millionaires. I mean, it is incredible. Just on the weekend, there was a documentary on the growth of China within the past 20, 30 years. And it is incredible. Almost every week, a new airport is being opened in China. In the past 10 years, over 200 completely new cities have been built in China. I mean, we all know about the industry, about the development in China. So to make it seem as if hordes of poor people will descend yeah. on St. Lucia, because that is the inference, that is the suggestion. That there's no good Chinese. But not too long ago, some people wanted us to be with China. Eh? Right. <laughs> you remember that? Eh? Yeah. You know, I mean, the hypocrisy, the blatant, unadulterated hypocrisy of some people here just for political expedience. It's a shame. Aren't you all a shame? How do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? I mean, don't you guys have nightmares? I mean, but, 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 no, but, you know, you go first. Uh, but, yeah, no, but yeah. listen to me. You know, I was listening to the house I was driving down to, to, to view for, and I heard when the member for Kashi South made that statement. I mean, for someone who claimed to have that level of education. Who's traveled. Who has been around. To make a statement like that, two billion Chinese will descend on St. Lucia. Two billion. That is, the, that is the suggestion he's making. I mean, there's no sense with that statement. No sense. My 14-year-old my son will not even make a statement like that. Okay? Fear-mongering. That's what it is. Fear-mongering. China is thriving. The Chinese now are staying home. They're not even going anywhere around the world anymore. I mean, there are business people in, in China that goes out to have the businesses done. But these people are not even trying to get out of China anymore. China is, like you said, almost the world's largest economy. It's, it's, I mean, it's metropolitan on. like New York. Oh, there, I please. mean, there are, poor, there are poor areas in New York. Please. Better, better lie, oh, go ahead, because... You know, that's not our There show. are poor areas in the U.S. Do you see them flock into St. No, Lucia just because they're no. poor? And then one I, more I, thing I, I need to say. How much, because you made the statement, how much does it cost for, uh, to get out of China to come to St. Lucia on an airline? How well, much does an airline well, I could cost? find out for you in a while. It should be over 10,000 EC. Well, I, I, I can't tell you off the top of my yeah. head, but we could, um, yeah. we could find that so, out. So my really argument, Brother Lai, why, why my, go there? Uh, no, my, listen, let me clarify. My argument is, you think a poor person with $10,000... <laughs> but <laughs> why go there? I, I think that's the most stupid thing that I've heard in, uh, yeah. coming out of the House of Assembly. My, I, I could not because you, we, we don't have visa restrictions from Barbados. Barbados has 240,000 people. Yeah. So we, we, we expect 240,000. All of Barbados. You see, you see the, 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 the two billion sound yeah, like a big number, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So when you hit $2 billion, you a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you had $2 billion Chinese. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be flooded with Chinese. We can't accommodate two so billion what's Chinese. So stopping, what's stopping 240 billions from coming um, to Sanders? Exactly. And, and they're, they so, close, and they're so much yeah. closer. You know, what's to put it so night? simple, <laughs> yeah. to make it so simple. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, so simple. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Why, why not? Why not the streets filled with Canadians? But hold and, on, and Americans. But yeah. but hold on. We're a member of CSME. Yeah. And there's free travel. Yes. Yeah. We're not inundated with people from Grenada, or Saint Vincent. They haven't descended on us, and Saint Lucia is considered to be one of the 
more I mean the, the productive yeah. islands over the last two years. Who 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 will believe that somebody would stand up and talk about uh, two billion yeah, Chinese yeah, yeah. insulting yeah. people that yeah. we given two right. billion t- Chinese yeah, if we come to Saint Lucia? Yeah. We have the we have the whole of Canada and the whole of the United States yeah. can but come to Saint Lucia yeah. without a visa. Yeah. We have we have other countries around the Caribbean that can come to Saint Lucia without a visa. Yeah. Right? But the choose only the Saint Chinese, Lucia. the two billion Chinese will come to St. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> That's laughable. I hope Paul Keynes Douglas never hear about that. <laughs> okay, well well I did a quick search here and um from St. Lucia to Shanghai. It'll take you thirty nine hours and fifty five minutes with two stops. Wow. The total yeah. length of the trip. Mm-hmm. And it'll cost you two thousand four hundred and eighty-two dollars and three U.S. All right, that's over th- over five thousand. Oh, five six about six thousand EC. Do Trinidadians need visa to come to Saint Lucia? No. How many people in Trinidad? Three bil- three million or something like that. One, one point two, something. Is it two? About, point, I thought it was two point seven. Something. Almost three million people in, in, in no, Trinidad. No, no, it's, it's one point something. Sure, you'll yeah, get yeah, Trinidadians here. Eh? Sure, you'll get Bajans here. Eh? Sure, you'll get Dominicans here. Eh? Mm-hmm. Well, you're talking, but when somebody stands up in the house and yeah. try to tell people uh, that we give two billion, uh, when yeah. why don't he ever stand up and say that we give two hundred and fifty thousand Barbadians to come to Saint That's Lucia? right. No visa. No visa. Yeah. Why does he say we give ninety thousand Vincentians <laughs> to come to Saint Lucia? One point no three visa. million. One point three six million Trinidad. Trinidad. Why don't we give one point three six million Trinidadians to come here? So you that see, is all of your is country. The people, <laughs> is the people that do not know, and yeah, they, can, they can be fooled, they manipulated, manipulated, yeah. and that's what's happening in the house by somebody no, no, who but thinks he's so serious. intelligent. Somebody of that level. Of education swell. That's what I assume. How could that individual make such a dumb statement? And I call it a dumb statement. I'll call it a dumb statement anyway. It does not make sense. It's it's it it listen, there's nothing complicated about that. It is designed to simply mama guy and BS people. And it is an insult. Mm -hmm. It is an insult to anyone's intelligence, and it says Exactly what the individual thinks about your level of intelligence. Saint Lucians are smarter than that. Yeah. If mm-hmm. they think two billion people, yeah. um, two billion people Chinese will come to Saint Lucia. Yeah. So let's let's move on a bit here, folks, because I am going to tackle the latest foolishness that we've had to deal with, and this one is about the bridging finance facility. For $100 million, the government borrowing about $100 million from the NIC, formerly NIS, and before that, the Provident Fund. And a document which was circulated online, you know, what really gets me is that the people behind these arguments and behind this document here today are very well aware of what it is, you know. And it's dated July the 10th, and it's a bridging finance facility. And it says, this letter supersedes letter dated July 3rd, 2018, which means that the one of July the 3rd, which was used, is null and void, and this has been amended to reflect. The government of St. Lucia kindly requests a bridging finance facility with the National Insurance Corporation in the amount of EC $100 million. The proceeds of the facility will be used to process the payment of two bonds maturing between July 30th to 31st, 2018 and totaling EC $117 million dollars on the Regional Government Securities Market, RGSM. It is the intention to reissue the instruments between July 31st and August the 2nd on the Regional Government Securities Market, and upon settlement of the said transaction, the funds 
will be transferred to your selected account. Based on the foregoing, we propose that the facility will operate under the following terms and condition. The amount is EC $100 million. The issue date is July 23, 2018 and at an interest rate of half a percent. Wouldn't you like to get a loan under those terms? Half a percent? And the tenor or the repayment will be 30 days. The maturity is 30 days. Now, folks, a lot of noise was made about the use of this bridging finance facility. And I'll give you the generic meaning of what a bridging finance facility is. But those of you who may be ahead of me would have already Googled it and come up with a response. But for those of you who may be just relaxing in bed or wherever you are, I'll read to you what definition comes up on the internet. A bridging finance facility or a bridge loan is a type of short-term loan typically taken out for a period of two weeks to three years pending the arrangement of larger or longer-term financing. It is usually called a bridging loan in the United Kingdom and a lot of the terminology that we use here is from the British system also known as a caveat loan and also known in some applications as a swing loan. So that's the basic definition of what it is. Oh, they're going to deplete pensioners' fund. Oh, my God. They're messing with the pension, people's pension. What y'all doing with the people's pension money? Yeah. What y'all doing? Yo, Pajuela Jose Munla. And you hear people calling up these talk shows all frantic. I work all my life, my money. They're going to take my pension. What are I going to do? You know the hypocrites who are peddling this type of fear. Because that is fear. Older people, elderly people, persons who will be retiring soon. Of course, they'll be concerned. Of course, they'll be concerned. But the shameless peddlers of propaganda and lies have no compunction. They don't care about you. Because if they cared, they would not be BSing you like this. So, a quick check. You know, it's great to have records. A quick check, folks, shows or unearths or discovers a letter dated October the 14th, 2015. Seven months. Seven, well, nine months before the 2016 elections. And guess which administration was in office then? <laughs> the administration of those who are crying foul right now, they themselves avail themselves to the funds of the NIC to the tune of $40 million. $40 million, issue date of November the 2nd, 2015, at an interest rate of 5%. And the term of that loan is for 180 days. So what happened to the pension money then? What happened to the pension money then? Was it not at risk at a higher percentage rate to you all? Was it not at risk? You know, this is the hypocrisy that we have to deal with, you know. The mama guy. You know, pulling the wool over people's eyes. $40 million. So, so what happened? What happened with the pension back then? Did something happen? But you know, people mislead you with half-truths. And of course, anybody hearing 
about the loan from the NIC and not knowing about the inner workings and how much money is available and the liquidity and the assets which are held by the NIC, the National Insurance Corporation. These people will, of course, be alarmed because, of course, where are they going to go to get the information? They, your past, Sal, they, they're more confused than anything. The only thing they're concerned about is that you've juked the nerve of pensions and they're concerned about that. But folks, you know, in, I did my little investigation thing. Oh, 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 Jasav, you know me already. I ain't coming and talk without getting my background information. So, one of the things you have to realize in examining this is that the National Insurance Corporation, NIC or NIS, as many people remember it as. The NIC doesn't just take your contributions or your payments and just put it in the bank and just sit down there and whatever you put in is what you're going to get out later on. That's ridiculous. That would not be sustainable and you would not have a pension. The NIC actually invests that money and they have guidelines on how to go about investing those monies. And any time you invest, there is a risk. There is no guaranteed formula, but you can put measures in place to minimize that risk. So I have here in front of me the National Insurance Corporation Investment Policy and Guidelines, and that's revised May of 2018. So that's just about, what, three months, two, three months ago. And on page number nine, under the heading of asset allocations, see, it tells you how the monies that are owned, owned or received by the NIC are divvied up and what they're put into. And... Part of the investment policy of the NIC is government lending. You know, lending money to the government, just like the bridging finance facility and for other projects. And the allocation that the National Insurance Corporation is allowed for government lending is 20 to 30% of all their finances. 20 to 30 percent to land and buildings 10 to 20 percent equity 5 to 15 percent foreign investments in the region 10 to 15 percent and outside of the region 5 to 15 percent fixed deposits 10 to 15 percent direct lending non-government 10 to 20 percent now These investments, foreign investments, of course, we've all heard of Wall Street and stocks and bonds and all of that. And some of the monies that you do pay into the NIC go into the big game that we know as trading. So the NIC tries to make money with your money to pay you money later on when you retire. Now, I'd like to refer to something else here because one of the things that we need to realize or understand is something referred to as a credit rating. And individuals have credit ratings and governments have credit ratings and companies have credit ratings. However, I would like to inform you that as of July the 23rd, just one day ago, two days ago, the credit rating for St. Lucia was just sealed at 
uh, Carrie Chris Triple B or Carrie BBB. And that is on their scale and definitions of what the credit ratings are. That is described as the definition is adequate credit. And of course, the NIC would consider the credit rating of the government of St. Lucia along with other criteria before it issues a loan to the government of St. Lucia for whatever amount. But there's also something else that I'd like to point out to you. Now, remember, the credit rating of St. Lucia was just upgraded or maintained at a triple B two days ago. Now, there is a news report from Kana, and it is dated 21st of June, 2013. And we'll, we'll just go to the, the last line of that news report. Uh, this information is also on the Carrie Chris website. And it says, in a statement, the agency said it had downgraded its ratings on the government's debt issues by one notch on its regional scale, taking it, that's St. Lucia, eh? taking it from B plus to B, St. Lucia's credit rating in 2013. And if we recall, for a number of successive years, the economy of St. Lucia, those years, 2014, 2013, 2015, the economy of St. Lucia had been in negative growth. So at that time, with a declining economic growth in negative figures and a reduced credit rating, the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party was able to secure a $40 million loan bridging finance facility from the NIC. Were they not concerned about paying back at that time when everything was deflating? Oh! Let me read to you the state of affairs with St. Lucia's economy back then. Not just the credit rating, not just the declining economic figures, but I will quote directly for you from a Government of St. Lucia report, medium-term debt management strategy for the period 2013-14 to 2017-18. So they had written this report to extend well into the next government of St. Lucia. So on page number five, under executive summary, paragraph number two, here's what the government of St. Lucia of Kenny Anthony said at the time. And we listen to, again, the concerns that are raised about people's pensions yeah. with the question mark over whether the government can repay the loan in the period of time of 30 days. And what will happen with people's pensions? Yet they apparently, with a worse financial and economic situation in St. Lucia, were no, con no concerns, although the government had their own report to indicate that things were bad. Listen to this. The GOSL's current debt burden has fostered the inability of the government to accumulate buffers and to implement fiscal policies to spur economic growth needed and to place the country on a more sustainable path. The current debt portfolio has been characterized by short-term domestic debt, creating significant pressure on cash flows and fostering high 
roll over risks. Consequently, the 2013 MTDS envisages a continued reliance on the domestic market and commercial borrowing to meet most of the gross financial needs by the year 2017-2018 with target on longer term instruments of about 10 years duration. This strategy will facilitate the need to reduce rollover risk as well as provide the government with more time to meet the requirements necessary to access more external concessional funding. So what does that mean, folks? It means that the former administration, because of the financial situation in St. Lucia back then, when this report was tabled or presented to the government, they figured that commercial they needed commercial borrowing to meet most of the gross financing needs by financial year 2017-2018. But isn't this exactly what the government is doing? Isn't this exactly what this current administration is doing? So, I mean, it is mysterious to me that the arguments being made against this administration for very prudent measures are almost similar or almost the same as what the previous SLP administration under Kenny Anthony recommended. That was the medicine to deal with the fiscal situation. However, however, that was when the economy was worse. That is when the economy was going down. Right. Negative growth. We have a much better economy now. We have an increased credit rating of triple B yep. from Carrie Chris. We have record numbers with tourism. Yep. Even in the light of a 2.5% reduction in VAT. And with all of that, the economy of St. Lucia is performing better than when you had VAT exactly. at 15%. So who's doing things right and who was unable to do it sufficiently well to fix the situation in St. Lucia? and at least be able to afford taking out a loan from the NIC. Nevertheless, in my discussions with the NIC, according to the information that I have, throughout the years, the different facilities extended to the government of St. Lucia by the NIC, whether it's a bridge facility loan or whether it was other types of loans, that over the years that the government of St. Lucia has never defaulted on any of their loan obligations to the NIC. I think the persons in the previous administration know that very well and also that the NIC people would know that just as well. But just in case there are any concerns about people's pensions, I'll go even further. I asked some more questions, and I was informed that with the cash flow, hold on here, let me just get the exact thing here because I make my notes. The current cash flow of the NIC can support its financial obligations to its members, whether it be pensions or any other services that the NIC or facilities that the NIC has to provide to its members. So, also, 
there is the NIC annual report 2017, just last year. And I will read to you, of course, that's, uh, I will read to you, that's available online. And under assets, let me see what section is this, page 12 of 117, it's the annual report. Under assets, it says, total assets at June 30th, 2017 was $2.12 billion and represented a 3.39% increase over the previous financial year. So all the cries of doom and gloom about the NIC not being able to take care of pensioners just because the government is borrowing from them is absolute poppycock. It's baloney. It goes further to say, at the end of the financial year in review, the NIC's reserve increased by 3.72% or $75.64 million to $2.11 billion. 2016, it was at $2.0. Zero three billion. The this the trend of reserves is illustrated in the figure below, but that's not you won't be able to see that here. So, folks, what exactly is the problem other than fear mongering and trying to destabilize a hard working government? A call. Well, we lost that one. Four five six zero nine three one. If you have any questions or comments or contributions, call us here, so we could discuss what's going on. If you'd like to email, the email address is info at keepingitreal. dot lc. Champagne. Yes, sir. What do you think about all of this? Well, listen. I don't know if you were on the island during the time. You remember the the blue coral mall? Yes. Where was that money coming from? Did you tell Where me. Did... <laughs> <laughs> Where did the SFP borrow that money from? <laughs> to buy over the, the building well, and to renovate it. I, I think and you're suggesting. Blue coral I think you're suggesting NIC. Of course, that's where the money came from. And you saw that delay. How long? You see, the, how the, long the was good that thing place about me floundering over there? <laughs> my God, the good thing about me, I follow the politics and I stay focused. I have some information. That blue coral mall. When that was purchased, with the, 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 it's just like this, almost the same thing with the St. Jude's Hospital. These guys delayed and delayed on, on the Blue Coral Mall. But I, you remember that time? Oh, yeah. the, the Blue Coral Mall was going to be opening, and they had to, there was another problem. They had to break stuff down, do some other... A mess. I do not remember the actual figure that was borrowed, mm -hmm. but I could tell you it was a, a few millions. Yeah. A few millions. It's, 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 so when you had these guys crying about the, the current administration or the, the government borrowing some money and they go out there and say, oh, the poor people, these guys did worse and for what? You know? And I like your title. I said that. But you know, it's it's interesting. It's, it sounds to me that the government would just go and take the money from the NIC. <laughs> it, it, it it, that's that what it suggests. The it so, it the government like, says, just give us money and they, they, you know. they would just get it. You know, um, that the NIC doesn't have a, 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 board, a board that directors. would, that would um, yeah. be able to put two and two together and dis yeah. decide whether or not one they, of they the can. Most, one of the most viable 
you know companies in St. Lucia. You know, it's like it's like the government went in there, like the government went in, and they just strong armed the, the director, the directors mm. there, and said, "Give us money." And it yeah. was a big fight, yeah. like Jerry Springer, you know. <laughs> is this what really happened? Is is this what really happened? You know, is this like the Jerry Springer show where you just beat it out of people, whatever you want, you go take it? You know, for, for, for next Tuesday's program, I would like you to go into the files of the Blue Coral Mall. Yeah. Get the files with the NIC, what the loans were. How the much secret was, files. The secret files, because I know about it. I do not know every detail. I can't remember every detail for now, but... If you let me know you were going to talk about that, I will ask you to try to find those that, that record on the Blue Coral Mall because that was another disaster. Took years for reno to, to complete the renovations. Another few years to get it open. So when you hear these guys crying about NIC borrowing and all that crap, listen, these guys have done worse but, by but, far. But but you know it's um it's really um interesting. To see that all of a sudden persons who had been moo moo, yeah, you know, under similar circumstances in the previous administration, whether it's with regard to this loan that was taken out or anything else, nobody had a voice for some strange reason. Nobody had a voice, you know, for how many years we had a problem with the desilting of the dam nothing was done at all nada zero zilch if there's one person that should not say a word in regards to the betterment of St. Lucians or the uplifting of upliftment of St. Lucians or the empowerment of St. Lucians Filipino you know? because let me say something I have a video I'm putting it together at the moment I'm trying to put every detail together and then when it's completed with Kashri's East, where I was born and still reside, okay? And if you were to go to Kashri's East, Masha, Bokaj, you know, and look at the way people live in regard housing, regarding housing, this guy would not ever, ever make a statement on national television, far less than the House of Parliament. But like you said earlier, it's what our people accept. They figure everything is okay. Whatever these people do is all right. Yeah. Bold face. Yeah. <laughs> and that's right. not a bowl you drink soup in, eh? No, but this is serious, you know. This is serious. And last night on our program, I, I mentioned and, and Brother Lionel wanted me to stop. How could you be in an administration for five years and don't even provide shelter for one person? No, I want your, your, your perspectives on that, um, um, Brother No, but I don't want to derail your program because I know you have a, 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 a schedule. If you are a prime minister of a struggling, a small country like St. Lucia, and you know the condition of housing, the way people live in this country, you could see it because it's right there. You see Fuwa Show, you see Barons driving so fair, you see Shanditong of, of um, um, Beaufort, you see the other... You see Conway, you see Conway. everywhere, everywhere. And you spend five years... Don't forget Bruceville, eh? By, by Shanditong, yeah. Yeah, that's the one I was talking yeah. about, Bruceville. Wouldn't it be nice to at least have at least one housing development, housing project for one but, of, but, um, of but, these But, Champagne, why are you asking me that? I was not in the previous government. No, I'm asking you if you were prime minister of this country. But, uh, but, but that is one of the most important aspects of government, especially in these times. These guys didn't see w that. And, and, and when you look at the quality of housing in a number of these areas that you mentioned... It is critical that you implement these housing projects. And I think what Timothy Mangal yeah. was saying here mm -hmm. the other night mm -hmm. and the details that he gave raised a lot of hopes for people who want to afford a home and I'm, they have not been given the opportunity to do that. Listen, I'm very passionate about that. I will never stop as long as I'm in this studio Every once in a while, I'm going to make mention of that because this is insane. You cannot say to me that you are aware the condition, the way of living in this country regarding housing, and you could not identify one. As a matter of fact, Brother Timothy said that there's a the, the Lansing um, 
Some of you in, in, in Nambabu now. Let me try to find the name there. In, uh, Talvan. Talvan. The Talvan's lands was about to be sold to a group of foreign people. Could you imagine that? Government property. Crown lands. A group of foreigners were already in control. It's big. The only way it didn't happen, the reason why it didn't happen, is because the SLP lost the election. How is these things possible? Well, um, I'm sure you could wait outside the House of Assembly at some point and pose those questions to a few members who were in the previous administration but or write have, a letter. But you have a government now, two years, two years and a, and a couple months into operation. And into the government. To they have been able to do two. They have two ongoing and 11 marked. 11. That is 13 altogether. Not in one area of St. Lucia. Island, I didn't say it. Mr. Timber Pimangal was here twice. Right, Brother Ellis? On two occasions he was here. And he was speaking in that regard. Now, I know Brother Ellis wants to purchase another home. So he and Brother and Timber P, after the program, I saw them stop speaking in the back. They left me out of the conversation. But it's all right. At least our people you're could try, have. You're, you're trying to expose the man. No, now. I, that, I didn't say they were talking about that. I, I saw them but talking about you were about, insinuating that. No, no, no. I was insinuating. That's my buddy. He could take it. <laughs> he could take it. No, but, but, this but, is you know, but you know, um, my buddy here, I mean, we're friends, of course had to jump into the fray because there always has to be that intellectual yeah, yeah, I mean, discussion I, I, here. I have a problem with that, um, I'm, I'm better not. Yeah, but there always has to be this this um, discussion or this infusion of intellect which is simply designed to bamboos the brains of people without really highlighting all of the possibilities. But but um the um Dr. Jimmy Fletcher of course posted on his Facebook page his take on the bridging finance facility that the government sought has sought from the NIC. And of course, he goes into a lot of details and a lot of sections of the National Insurance Corporation Act and what you to do, to what, what the, the investments and all of that, um, which would be lost on a lot of people. I mean, the nitty-gritty of it all and going through all of this, it seems to me that the objective or the direction mm -hmm. that Jimmy Fletcher wants to point is that it's a very iffy or dangerous undertaking of the government and the National Insurance Corporation, almost suggesting, not in those words, but almost suggesting that people's pensions, because this does not come in a vacuum. It comes on the heels of a lot of other discussion. But then, after one, two, three, four, five pages, the final paragraph, when you may very well have been tired of all the details and convince yourself that, you know, this is just a crazy situation by the government, Jimmy Fletcher has a postscript. It's rather curious that he would title it the postscript. And he says in this very last paragraph, I, I don't want to call it a diatribe, but you could call it whatever you want. There is one possible good outcome in all of this. It is possible that the $100 million loan from the NIC is required as a contingency for the two bonds not rolling over and the government has not yet received indication that the investors intend to cash them in. If this is the case and the bonds are rolled over, then the money's deposit would be returned to the government which could then repay the NIC. Let us hope this is a possible scenario. But he already says that this is one possible 
good outcome in all of this, you know, painting it as a scenario. But a few lines down, he says, let us hope this is a possible scenario. If it is, it allows us to dodge this coming bullet, but it still means we are playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette with our debt financing. We must do better. But when, when Jimmy Fletcher says, we must do better, which we are he, is he talking about? Which we? Is it we, the government, this current administration? Is it we, the people of St. Lucia? Is it we collectively as a government, the previous administration and this administration? Because you notice in here that although he describes it as one possible good outcome, immediately he goes to lambasting the government and, and sowing more doubt and concern about what the government is doing. Why didn't he choose this as the highlight and say, this more than likely, based on the prudent measures that the Alan Chastney government has taken since assuming office, that the final scenario that he has posted here is more than likely the scenario that is going to apply to this bridge finance facility that the government has undertaken with the NIC. Why doesn't he suggest that? Because all the, the moves of this government suggests that the financial strategies have been prudent. The increased numbers in the economy the increased numbers for tourism, record increased numbers, and the increase in St. Lucia's credit rating are clearly, I mean, the figures speak for themselves. The businessmen can tell you. The hotels can tell you. The, the numbers and the statistics don't lie that this government is doing much better of for the people of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And by all indications, it is continuing with the just-released numbers for tourism again. So all this doom and gloom that is being peddled out there is flying in the face of reason, is flying in the face of the facts which are available to the very persons who are peddling this drivel and this nonsense. But Norbert, this document, we've been going through it, myself and Brother Ellis, and I think this has to be made public. What do you think? Well, you know, you know, this is the same old nonsense that we heard just before the last elections. Five dollars can block a hole, man. <coughs> These absurd statements. <coughs> so St. Lucia should continue surviving on five dollars blocking a hole. These absurd statements, just like when the member for Labry recently in the House during the budget debate said the fix to St. Jude Hospital mm -hmm. was just to go by, get some chemical yeah, and yeah, clean that up and you'd have a hospital. Yeah. The audacity yeah. of yeah. such nonsensical and ridiculous statements. This is not any aircraft with any flight plan. This aircraft has a pilot in charge under the name of Alva Baptist who is only VFR certified. But yet still he's above the clouds and he cannot find a hole in the ceiling to land. He is not instrument rated. And he's calling on one to one decimal five May Day. And he's screaming like a little girl because he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I mean, these are the ridiculous fixes that are being said, so these nonsensical statements that are being made to the people of St. Lucia. And they're expected to swallow it. Just get some chemical, man. Chemical. You see, but the government now, the current administration has a responsibility to bring these things out to the public because people accept what they hear. If you bring a negativity out there and that's all the people are hearing, this is what they're going to accept, right? Well, it's out there now. Uh, and, and, and I encourage people out there that the secret files that you all have there, out there, Send them in to Champagne. So, I, oh, listen to me. I just need to get a publisher, and I'll be. You have some money, so I could publish this because I would love to do nothing better 
than to publish this to every household in St. Lucia. Because I heard for myself tonight the member for Viewfort North speaking about the very things that, that, in, that is written in this document. They all are, are, listen to me. You said it right earlier. That all the criticisms yes. leveled against this current administration it about did. the George Odlam Stadium, yes. I am putting it to you that they are taking it directly from this of course. and making it seem that it's the government's fault when they had this information right. to, to work on you know the what George Odlam Stadium. You know what's surprising? They may be shaking in their boots tonight because they didn't expect you or somebody to find out before. But, but listen to me. This listen to me. Listen to me, Champagne. L listen to me, folks. All of this information that I have here, all of these reports, the persons who are shouting and screaming the loudest, right. challenging the government, I am putting it to you that they have all of this information mm -hmm. at their disposal or they can get it. Right. But yet still they choose to ignore it Imagine that and, and to peddle their propaganda and criticize the government yeah. knowing full well that they are being disingenuous, that they are being far from the truth, that they are being economical with the truth. Mm -hmm. And as somebody says, I'm not saying that they're lying, but they're not saying the yeah. truth. And, and you see, they use that platform because they know the masses doesn't have that kind of information. So they figure it's free. It's okay to make these statements. You understand? So these now, these reports has to be made available to the public. It has to. Now, Brother, Ellis it has is to. Going, Brother Ellis is going through this day. He's deep in thought, reading this out here to himself. Mm -hmm. He's trying to... Um, that's is does that look like your flight plan? No, it's unbelievable to him. That's the, it, that's why he's. Is that your he flight plan? Is that your weather report? No, it's worth reading. It. It's worth reading. Yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, there's it a lot of information in there. And I am very surprised that this document was not available, uh, and um, uh, not even to the point where a member of the Labour Party would say that uh, the. The, they have had it, and um, the information reveals very serious situations with the George Rodlam Stadium. And that's three years ago. You see, because here is here's an, uh, an, another thing I, I'm just reading here, and the observations and findings. Over 50% of the nodes or connectors were observed to be severely corroded. <laughs> These are the things that connecting up the stadium, the roof. The roof yeah. The, the, in 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 terms of the tubular members, widespread corrosion was observed in most of the tubular me, me, uh, members, mm -hmm. which is a steel circular section. However, the level of corrosion was principally principally severe at the critical at the conical ends of the members where the connect but, where they connect to the nodes. But how dare you even say that? This only happened under the UWP since the two thousand and sixteen elections. This well I think he has a different date though. <laughs> you right, Brother Ellis, you have a different yeah. date. I have I have the twelfth um twenty second <laughs> of twelve two thousand and fifteen. Right. <laughs> And I, I don't remember there was an election in 2015. Well, well, well. Yeah, this is this is very very serious. Of I, course I it is. Of course it is. I, I, There's no laughing matter about that. Yeah. This is no laughing matter. Okay. Yeah. So if it if if it was that bad in 2015, let let let's just speak right here now. If after this survey was conducted, right? Mm -hmm. And there, there it was. was a, give me one minute, minute yeah, better, yeah. because I need to clap, be the point out. And that thing was so bad, and the building now. The roofing mm -hmm. had collapsed. We just saying a big if because it didn't happen. But after this report, right? Somebody found it. The report was done. The report was read. The building came, cra the roofing came crashing down. What would happen? And it's three years later after this report. Yeah. Right. It was something that was said. But here. nobody said, you know what? We didn't fix it, and you know we're sorry. We take responsibility too. But do your best. No, it's your fault. Yeah. You do it now. It's neglect. Free, you don't care yeah. about the people at the George Rodham Stadium. You don't care about the yeah. staff. Yeah. You don't care about the people going there. But yet still there are goats and cows roaming about the place. There's 
a sewage system that's been leaking for years, five years now, yeah. spewing sewage into the mangrove. But nobody was concerned back then. It's only now. No, yeah, you, have you, know, a, you have an agriculturist now becoming a physician overnight. Well, that's Not all right. Something. You can work on some macambos or a, something. He'll be a doctor next it's year. Apparently. That's amazing, huh? A guy just transformed from an agriculturist to a, a, a medical doctor. Yeah, but the min our minister of health right now knows nothing about health. And yeah. you have people who are talking about health who yeah. don't know anything. Yeah, we have yeah. people who don't know anything. Yeah. And they're talking like experts. Yeah, I problem, guess man. being an agriculturist makes you an expert on everything I else. I guess. There was something that I saw here that um, referred to the dangers of human life. <laughs> and if this was, uh, it, it was referring to the, the roof, things falling off the roof. Oh, yeah, something that, like that. Um, oh, there it is. There it is. I want to read this. Under roof gutters, right. roof gutters. It says the roof gutters are, fabricate, are fabricated mainly of galvanized steel, with supports being provided by the steel frame of the roof. The visual inspection reveals that the gutters have deteriorated completely, and represents an imminent hazard to human life, as sections of the roof gutter are continuously falling from the roof. Twenty fifteen, you heard that. No, I want, I, I'm taking over your show now, Brother yeah, Norbert. Yeah, take St. Lucia, did you just heard what was read? Brother, uh, brother Lyle, you think you'll read it again for St. Lucia? Sure, I... I, I yeah, <laughs> please, please do. The roof gutters are fabricated mainly of galvanized steel, with support being provided by the steel frame of the roof. The visual inspection reveals that the gutters have deteriorated completely and represents an imminent hazard to human life. That's that's the one I want to stop. Let me yeah. hold on, hold on, and you can't leave all words in this. Here. No, and represents an imminent hazard mm -hmm. to human life, right. as sections of the roof gutter are continuously falling from the roof. Okay. So, when it did was that report? An imminent threat to human life. That report was done in 2015, but today. These people are calling foul, saying, oh, people's lives, people will die because of the same. You know what? They are reading, they are speaking directly, Brother Norbert, mm -hmm. from this report. Mm -hmm. no, thinking that yeah. this was a hidden report, no one would have found it. Okay? Based on what you hear, these people, they, they, they're crying all day. This was a page from their own report. That's what you call a reverse leak. Yeah. yeah. Reverse leak. And I would love for St. Lucia, every household, to have a copy of that every single household to have a copy of that report. November 2015, St. There was no way the UWP was in office at that time. And there's a report on the roofing of the St. Jude's Hospital, the George Odlam Stadium, so-called St. Jude's. Okay? Hmm. So. so, folks, we're uh, getting to that time. We just yeah, have it, about... Yeah, I, I just want to read this because this is so interesting. Um... It says, during limitations of ac assessment, now, the assessment of this report mm -hmm. had limitations. And it says, during the visual survey, it was not possible to conduct a close-up examination of the various roof components, as the steel catwalk, which provides access to the right. roof space, exhibited significant deterioration from corrosion, mm -hmm. and therefore it was advisable not to traverse the structure for safety reasons. Okay. So even the guys yeah. inspecting yeah, were they couldn't afraid. Even take the <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Consequently, most of the recorded observations and findings were executed at floor level. This is critical, critical given that virtually the entire roof structure is covered with rust, proving it difficult for the substrates to be examined closely for more advanced attack. That's that 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 tells me a lot. Three Thank you, Norbert. Yeah, yes, you, you 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 wanna you wanna look at something document on here? Of the studio. A document this has been made a document of the studio. And um, I guess in time if uh, the persons that be or were 
have anything to say. Surprisingly, they're very quiet tonight. I am going to take that down. So, yes, uh, we, uh, uh, and we open up the lines for calls. We're open. Four five six zero nine three one. Let's get up. Let's get. Let's get the night. Where's your lady friend that normally calls? Uh, she is usually the first caller. Uh, she ain't called tonight. That's your friend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen. listen anyway, you know, let me leave that alone because. <coughs> well, maybe she can call. Hey, call her out there. Why don't you give us a call tonight? You know, give us a call. You know, we like the, to get your. Input. The, the seriousness of this report, I think people are p p really listening because they too may be amazed on this report, you know? So, <coughs> somebody's phone. Yes, folks, so we've come to our allotted time tonight, just about 10 o'clock on the dot. I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. Look out for Keeping It Real. Next week, uh, Tuesday, where we'll have another hot topic for you. I'd like to thank uh, Champagne for being in the studio tonight, all Maybe. our listeners. You didn't respond to me on the on the housing issue, though. What's that? I mean, when I ask you about if you were the prime minister. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we had enough. If, if I was, if, if, I was the, if I was the prime minister. I said that, I said that deliberately. Let's close the show. Let's close the show. See, he had this housing thing. I think he's looking for a house. He's looking for a house. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's okay. Go, let's go. This, is, uh, this has been Keeping It Real, uh, episode number five on uh, July the 24th, 2018. Thank you for joining us. Next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m., same station, same time. Good night. <laughs> You've been listening to the program Keeping It Real with Norbert Williams.